Hi, I'm Phil Hunter, the pastor of Citrus Grove Church, and I'm here at Pinecrest Academy on Highway 54, where we gather on Sundays at 9.30. I'm inviting you this weekend, next weekend, join us when you can, and uh, grow with us. You are not made to grow alone. God planted us as a, a whole grove of trees, and it's better when you're in it together with others. This particular weekend, we happen to be looking at the last, no, not the last, the second to last chapter of Isaiah, uh, 65, <coughs> excuse me, so that's where I'm going in, in my Bible here. If you don't have a Bible at home, pick one of these up and take it home next time you're here. Another thing while we're at it giving stuff away is a, a catechism like this. We're going to use this for our Bible studies here in the next couple of months, so uh, we're already starting with them, including the Sunday study, the little bit before worship. It starts at 9, just a 20-minute Bible study on a section, a big life question that gets reinforced with Bible passages that are all clumped together by topic in here. Really useful resource. Um, and then again on Wednesdays, uh, online Bible study at 7 p.m. If you'd like to get the link to that, sign up for our emails. It goes out every week on Wednesday and keeps you in the loop on our ministries. To sign up for those emails, use the link that's over in the side of this video. Uh, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the start of Lent. We won't meet in person on this Ash Wednesday, but if you join us for that Wednesday online Bible study, we'll begin with an Ash Wednesday devotion then. Where we're at is Isaiah, like I said, but then we're going to jump over to Luke. Luke 18 is where we're going to uh, spend over a month, uh, almost going verse by verse through that chapter. Luke chapter 18. So if you want to preview that, that'd be a good place for you to go and, and look through what's coming up in Luke 18. Today we're talking about heaven, because uh, <coughs> excuse me, this is the, a week where we focus on Jesus' transfiguration. Jesus changed his appearance uh, while he was standing on a mountain one day. He knew what was going to happen, and he brought especially, particularly for this purpose, he brought along three of his close followers, his disciples, to watch this and be witnesses and get a little sneak peek of the, the power and the glory that Jesus was usually hiding under wraps inside, uh, underneath this um, regular-looking body. He was totally human and totally God in the same person. No one else has ever been like him. No one else ever will be. He's a, a marvelous uh, solution to our problem of sin and death and drudgery. Jesus brings all this glory and he shines with this hope for us too. Not hope of being Jesus, but the hope that there actually is something more glorious than what we're used to. This is not as good as it will get. He needed his followers then and now to understand that. What you see around you is not how it's always going to be. Things will get much better. But hang in there. It's, it's not worth throwing in the towel because things could get worse. Hang in there. Look at this glory that's coming up. Jesus himself knew this was just a momentary flash of his glory. It wasn't, wasn't permanent at this time. He was going to go back down from the Mount of Transfiguration. And that memory would stick in his followers' minds, but then they would watch him die on a cross. And it would look very far away from what they had seen shining on that mountain. Just very different. Of course, he rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven and we're going to see him with our own eyes and he'll look more like he did on, on that shining mountain. But he really went through the depths after it. He gives us a peek, too, of what heaven will be like. But first, before you do that, close your eyes and, and picture what heaven will be like. I'm not sure what you're picturing, could be something that you've seen in movies. Is that why you're picturing it? Is it somebody's near-death description of what they saw? Is it from the Bible? Is it from just popular imagination? Is it something you've pieced together over time? Is it a person that you're looking forward to see? Is Jesus there? Better than just wondering, better than making our guesses, better than asking other people, is to hear what God himself has to say about the place that he is preparing for you to enjoy permanently, forever. Uh, and let him tell us what it will be like. Let him tell us what it will not be like. And uh, let him kind of correct anything that we've got a misinterpretation of or a, a false impression of how it will be or won't be. 
there's a, on, on Sunday when we do this, I'm going to put it up on a board of uh, the things that definitely will be there in heaven and the things that definitely won't be. And there will, of course, be some things in the middle where God just hasn't told us, yes or no, this will be there in heaven. But he gives us enough between chapters like this in Isaiah that don't talk about anything that, that's going to happen here while we're living in, on this planet. Uh, but will happen after we die. And in some way that we know sounds crazy, God will take our souls to be with him and with his other followers, with other uh, relatives of ours, that people that we don't know, uh, people who died trusting in Jesus. That's where we're going to uh, be. And then he's going to put our bodies and our souls back together. A remarkable thing, and of course it sounds impossible, but God promises to do impossible things, and with him nothing is impossible. So we take him at his word, and as incredible as this sounds, it is credible. It's his promise of what heaven will be like. Enjoy hearing this. Think as I read this, uh, Isaiah 60, 65, verses 17 through 25. Think as I, as I read about, oh, there was something that is definitely going to be in heaven, or something that I, thankfully, will never have to deal with again. See, he says, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create, for I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. This is picture language of how do we communicate uh, eternity. We understand that the sadness of dying in young age or in old age is just part of what we're used to. We're not going to have to worry about that. Uh, no one will die in heaven. Uh, verse 21, they will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit, and no longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they're still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is God's word, his promise, so let's pray. Lord, give us a faith that trusts you, takes you at your word, believes what you promise will come true. It's beyond what we can even hope for, a life after this death, a perfect life with nothing wrong, we look forward to it, Lord, and trust you when you say this is how it will be. Thank you for promising this to us, even though we don't deserve anything like this. Thank you for your son who gave the sacrifice that was needed to allow us through those open gates. We ask you this week to get us through the tough times that will still face us in this world. Give us a steadfastness to trust you and to carry on, to endure through all things, strengthened by this little peak of heaven that you give us today. We thank you for your word and for your sacraments. We thank you for being in it together with other Christians who can remind us about this when the going gets tough. Please bless those who are lonely and those who are away from their church. Bring them close to you, Lord. And hear our prayers for all sorts of other people, all their different situations, we commend ourselves and all those we love into your care. We ask for your peace on this week. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Go in peace. Live in harmony with your brothers and sisters. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. Join us again next week. Bye-bye. Take care.